Emergent patterns. The following patterns don't really fall into other categories or are relatively new. The game loop pattern. A process that updates the application state and renders visuals frame by frame. This pattern is foundational for any real-time simulation. Most game engines implement this by default. For instance, Unity Engine has an explicit update method as part of its lifecycle within the mono behavior system. Poor structure of logic within the update loop can lead to errors on spaghetti code. The dependency graph pattern. A way of representing dependencies between objects or tasks, often used for resolving execution order or managing dependencies in complex systems like UI rendering or task pipelines. Nodes are often best expressed visually for more intuitive comprehension. Complexity increases with the number of dependencies, and cyclical dependencies can cause infinite loops. Idempotent receiver, a means of ensuring that processing a message multiple times has the same result as processing it once, used in distributive systems where duplicate messages may occur. We might use a global variable to track whether a certain process has been run. At the start of a method, that flag is used in a guard clause that returns early. If the process hasn't been run before, we run as normal and set the flag to true at the end. For instance, if an error occurs every frame, you can limit the number of logs or pop-ups to only notify you the first time and then dismiss it. This pattern requires additional storage to track processed messages, such as in a bool or hash set. The sidecar pattern. Auxiliary functionality is moved into a sidecar process that runs alongside the main application. This is common in microservices architecture to handle tasks like logging, caching, authentication, or monitoring without complicating the primary service. Also used in distributive systems to keep concerns like security or telemetry separate from the main application. Complexity increases with the number of processes, and latency can occur between the sidecar and main service. The Ambassador Pattern An intermediary that augments or manages remote communication on behalf of a service, where the mediator handles local objects and the broker handles distributed systems, the ambassador generally deals with external services, particularly those that involve retries, logging, and monitoring, or when using unreliable or slow networks. Risk of latency is increased as it inherently deals with remote systems. The Event Loop Pattern a programming pattern that continuously waits for and processes events. It's foundational for asynchronous systems like GUIs or server message handling. An input system is a good example of this pattern, as it constantly checks for inputs and then fires off events when it detects one. Other systems can then listen for those events while carrying on their normal business. Metadata mapping. A pattern for mapping metadata to behaviors or objects dynamically at runtime. Metadata refers to data about data, such as its properties, structure, or context. Used for systems with a strong separation between data and behavior, like configuring objects using external JSON or YAML files. Errors in metadata can lead to runtime errors. This pattern can also lead to indirect or hard-to-follow paths. The Value Object Pattern An immutable object representing a value often used to encapsulate complex values, such as currencies or measurements. Useful when you need objects that compare by value rather than by reference. Structs are a form of value object, while classes are a form of reference object. The immutable nature of value objects means they require more memory allocation. In order to modify a value object, you either need to create a new one or modify the underlying data they contain. Value objects are also useful as records in functional programming. The optional pattern. A container for encapsulating optional values. It's a type safe way to handle cases where a value might not exist. Used to avoid null references and to make the absence of values explicit. This pattern works well with generics, though additional wrapping and unwrapping create more overhead compared to a simple null check. Interpreter context. A process for designing a language interpreter. It creates classes to help define grammar rules and evaluates them. Used when implementing a custom scripting language, such as combining c -sharp and Lua, or when evaluating mathematical expressions, such as building a calculus library. Risk of complexity is high. The Event Replay Pattern A way to process events from a log to reconstruct state, used primarily in event-sourced systems where historical event data needs to be replayed. 
Cheat detection and crash logs are an example of this pattern. Event logs can grow large and potentially impact performance. Domain-specific patterns. These patterns focus on solutions tailored to particular domains or problem areas. They often arise from common practices or techniques that have proven effective in specific industries or use cases. They aim to provide reusable solutions for recurring problems in those domains. Spatial partitioning. A design pattern that organizes space into regions to optimize operations like collision detection, rendering, or pathfinding. Common techniques include quad trees, oak trees, and spatial hashing. Often used for games or simulations requiring efficient management of entities in large 2D or 3D spaces, such as managing AI units, bullets, or environmental effects. Choosing an incorrect cell size can result in inefficient performance. This pattern requires careful updates when objects move from one cell to another. The Data Pipeline Pattern A way to send data through a sequence of transformations or processing stages. Often used for streaming data, AI training pipelines, or procedural content generation. Used when your project involves processing large amounts of data in stages, such as image processing, animation, or procedural world generation. Complex pipelines can be hard to debug, and overhead is involved in chaining functions. The task queue pattern. A way to schedule tasks to be executed asynchronously, often in the background. Commonly used in server systems or asynchronous gameplay logic. Coroutines and tweens fall under this pattern, where actions are performed over multiple frames. Other examples include pathfinding, background loading, and task-based AI systems. Tasks generally require manual scheduling and prioritizing, as well as management of their life cycles. If there are any design patterns you think we missed, let us know in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe so you stay up to date when we release new content. If you'd like to learn more about programming and game design, click on the link appearing on your screen now, or see the description below for ways you can help support this channel. Thanks, and take care.